This is a lecture by Farouk Kalemi, narrated by Ungad Buttar. This is the first of four lectures on conditional probability. This is a lecture on conditional independence, part of a series of lectures intended to prepare you to do probabilistic risk analysis. This lecture introduces you to several methods of checking for conditional independence, an important element of causal models. A joint distribution shows the probability of two events co-occurring. In complex risk analysis containing several hundred events, the entire analysis is built on joint distribution of pairs of related events. Typically, one event is the cause and the other is the effect, and the purpose of specifying a joint distribution is to clarify the strength of the causal related relationship. The table shows a joint distribution of two events. The constant A, B, and C, and D show how many combination of the two events were observed. For example, A shows how many times the first and second event are both absent. For another example, the constant D shows how many times both first and second events are present. The data in the table have been standardized so that A plus B plus C plus D equals 1. If the data is not in the standard form, dividing by the sum of A plus B plus C plus D would accomplish the same goal. For example, the table shows the frequency in which understaffing and medication errors co-occur at our facility. In this table, there were 50 visits in which the clinic was adequately staffed and there were no medication errors. In contrast, there were 15 visits in which the clinic was understaffed and there was medication errors. The first step is to put table 2 in standard form by dividing the cell values by the total number of visits. Dividing by the total number of visits fits our notion of how probability should be measured by the frequency of observing an event divided by the total number of possibilities. Here, the total number of possibilities is the number of visits dividing by this number guarantees us that we have a probability function that allows the four axioms mentioned in the first lecture on probabilities. In the standardized table in the lower part of the slide, the joint distribution of staffing and medication errors is the four cells in the center of the table. For example, the joint probability of medication error in a visit in which the clinic was understaffed was 19%. On the right side and on the bottom row, the table shows a marginal distribution of each of the events. Marginal distribution shows the probability density function of an event by itself. For example, the standardized table shows that medication errors has a Bernoulli distribution with probability of an error being 29% and probability of no error being 71%. The frequency of understaffing is also another marginal distribution and is given in the right hand column. Notice that the marginal probabilities are a column and row-wide sums of a joint probabilities. We had earlier shown you how conditional probability is calculated by reducing the universe of possibilities to all situations that has already happened. We can see this reduction in the universe of possibilities by calculating conditional probabilities for events in Table 3. If the analyst wishes to calculate a conditional probability, the total visits should be reduced to visits in which the condition has been met. Suppose the analyst wants to calculate the probability of medication error if we know that the clinic is understaffed, shown as P medication error understaffed clinic. We need to reduce the visits to only when the clinic was understaffed. This is done by dividing the row by the marginal probability of being understaffed. We say the universe of possibilities has been reduced because now only visits in which the clinic was understaffed are reported. 
Note that the probability of the medication error in this is reduced universe is 68%. The point of this example is that conditional probabilities can be calculated easily by reducing the universe of possibilities to the condition. In probabilities, the concept of independence has a very specific meaning. If two events are independent of each other, then the occurrence of one event does not tell us much about the occurrence of the other event. Mathematically, this condition can be presented as shown. Independence means that the presence of one clue does not change the value of another clue. An example might be the prevalence of diabetes and car accidents. Knowing the probability of car accidents in a population will not tell us everything about the probability of diabetes. When two events are independent, we can calculate the probability of both co-occurring from a marginal probabilities of each event occurring. This is the same as to say that joint distribution is a product of marginal dis distributions. Under assumption of independence of staffing and medication errors, the probability of each cell in the table can be calculated as a product of the row and the column's marginal values. This table, constructed from our expectation of independence, can now be compared to observed visits. Chi-square tests compares observed number of visits to number of visits expected under assumption of independence. In Excel, if you want to compare observed to expected occurrences of an event, the chi-test function can be used. This function gives a probability of observing the two distributions by random chance. If this probability is less than 0.05, then we would reject the hypothesis that the two set of values are not related. For our example, the chi-squared statistic was 23. The probability of finding such high chi-squared statistic is 0.0001 and therefore we reject the hypothesis that the two variables are independent of each other. We could have, of course, also compare the probability of medication error with and without conditioning on the understaffing. If the two variables are independent, conditioning on understaffing should not change the probability. This is not the case. Please use the course website to ask a question and rate this lecture. This lecture will continue with a discussion on the mathematical definition of conditional independence.